Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Hengdal Chita. So we'll start this out officially. Thus have I heard. One time my, my old buddy Sid decided he was going to raise money for the shrine he was trying to build by marketing Buddhist umbrellas. And he didn't have a lot to work with. So he, he really, you know, he put some thought into it, what he had around that, that he could do this. And it made perfect sense to him. And so he, he found a, a big sheet of rice paper parchment and got his ink brush and his ink stick and stone and mixed up some ink. And he drew a, a Buddha in the middle of the parchment. And then he just wrote out some little bits of various sutras all around the Buddha on the parchment, just going out from him like rays. And he was all set. He thought, it's perfect. This is exactly what I need. This, this will do it. The Buddhist umbrella, it's a marvelous idea. And so he waited patiently for it to start raining. And eventually the rainstorm came up and with great excitement, he leaped up and he grabbed this piece of parchment and he held it over his head and he ran outside and stood under the, the parchment in the rain, taking shelter. And the rain soaked right through the parchment and the ink ran and it got all over him and, and he had to go back to the drawing board. And Sid figured probably it was because he, he got the Buddha and the Dharma in there, but couldn't figure out how to incorporate the Sangha in, into his umbrella and fully take refuge. We've recently been talking a, a lot about the refuges, the, the triple gem, and recently incorporated them in how we do our service every, every Wednesday. And that's common to most sanghas in most schools of Buddhism. Uh, probably the, some of the first experience I remember, uh, it's, just, it's just how you start out. It's how you say that you're a Buddhist in many communities, is you say the three refuges. That, that comes before precepts or anything else, you, you take refuge. So I've been thinking a lot about what that means. And, and it's an interesting concept, refuge, you know, and what does that really mean? What does it mean to take refuge? That's part of the, the training in the Soto Jikai is to examine the refuges. So what does that mean? Are you, are you taking refuge in the historical Buddha or the proto Buddha or the Buddha to be or yourself as Buddha? It, it may be the original koan. What exactly are you doing when you're taking refuge? What, what does that really mean? And how do you accomplish it? And so I've been thinking about the, the actual translations that we use. And translation is always funny. We deal with it all the time because most of our traditional texts are, are not in English. And English is, is this weird conglomeration of all kinds of words and languages that may not even mean anymore what they originally meant when we adopted them. So looking at refuge, it's, it's actually an interesting word and we all know what it means, you know, and, and you, know, you ask any, any person on the street, it's kind of like freedom, you know, well, what does it mean to be free? Well, you know, free. Well, no, define it for me. Well, nobody can tell me what to do. You know, I'm free. Refuge is kind of the same. Well, what does it mean? Um, well, you know, refuge, shelter. Um, yeah, well, you know, like a refugee, you go to a shelter and they, they feed you and keep you out of the rain. Well, the, the root of the word in Latin, which we have translated into English and we have decided charna means, is to flee back to retreat, um, or if you're a, a fan of Monty Python, run away, run away. And that might be applicable, you know, you, you could take it many ways again, if you're going back to your original face. Or if you're 
you're stepping back from the poisons that have trapped you in samsara. Now, of course, then you, you get into this other thing of, well, but Buddha said not to take refuge in anyone but yourself. That's, that's where the 15-year-old mind goes, right? Well, it's wrong. I can't take refuge because he told me not to take refuge. So it, it all gets really convoluted, like everything we talk about. So I'm going to offer you an alternate translation for Sharanam. And as with anything, feel free to use it, discard it, discount it. it it's, that's your trip, not mine. But I'd like to give you another word commonly used in English, which also goes back to Latin, if, if that's how we're going to, to work with our translation. It is a word that is generally translated as a, uh, a custom condition or demeanor, perhaps an appearance, a dress, a clothing, perhaps to re reside, to dwell. It's the root of a great many words we use in English. Um, habit, which probably comes from origins to give or receive or to hold. And habit is the clothing the monk wears, the, the robe of the Buddha that we don. Habit is our custom, our practice, our demeanor, our action. It's the thing we give ourselves over to every day. Like me years ago with smoking, every day, got to have that habit. It's where we reside, where we dwell, where we take shelter. It's the root of habitat. It's this root of all these concepts. So again, for whatever it's worth, take it or leave it. But I'll offer you this alternate translation of Sharanam, which is, I make the Buddha my habit. I make the Dharma my habit. I make my Sangha my habit. 